Today we're going to speak to Emma Cristofani about tutoring in the ACE program, how to navigate developing a strong peer tutor relationship with students while also maintaining a communication with the professor. Emma has worked as an ACE tutor for four different professors in addition to working as a drop-in and lab tutor, leading a citation workshop, creative writing workshops, and being a really highly valued member of CLES. Thanks so much for coming back to campus to Thank do this you. tutor training video. We really Thank appreciate you. it and it's great to have you back. So I thought I'd start by asking you, what do you see as the main difference between drop-in and lab and ACE tutoring, and how might your approach differ when tutoring a drop-in student or an ACE student? Well, with ACE, the main difference that you get is you really have a lot more time. You, you get to see the same students over and over again, and so relationship, your relationship with the student becomes a lot more important. Um, with writing and drop-in, I'm sorry, with, the, with lab and drop-in, I always really like to you know, ask a few questions about how people are doing to kind of, you know, make them feel comfortable and, you know, like, let them know that I'm a student too, but you don't really have that much time if you want to get through, you know, all you need to get through in a half hour. With ACE, you can have, you can even have specific meetings that are, like, purposefully to kind of meet students and get to know them, and it becomes really, really important because the more comfortable a student is with you and the more they feel connected to you, the better they'll receive your advice, you know, especially if you, they realize, like, oh, you've been through the same things that I have and you found a way to get through it and you found a way to kind of address these problems. And so the more connected you are, the better they'll kind of receive your advice. And um, yeah, so I think the biggest difference is that kind of fostering that relationship where I'll take more time to kind of ask how people are doing. And I had one session with someone where we literally only talked about how he was doing and how stressed he was. And it was still a really good session. It was really helpful. He went home and did all the work that he needed to get done, he just really needed to vent and kind of, you know, get that stuff off his chest to really be able to focus on what he needed to do. So it's a lot more of a holistic approach. In terms of relationship building, do you ever share any of your own experiences struggling with writing in order to build that rapport and trust with students in the ACE yeah. program? That's like my <laughs> my bread and butter, I guess. Uh, when you really, when I connect with them and sort of share how I dealt with things, it's a, it's really easy for me to explain because, you know, that's just how I was thinking at the time. And, and so it's really easy for me to kind of communicate to them. And then also, um, you know, B, they, they really kind of can at least take what you did and adjust it to their own individual needs. Um, so I would often tell people, you know, what steps I would take to approach a certain prompt and or like a certain type of prompt and they can either do what I did or you know do what I did the first time but then maybe make some small adjustments in the process to better suit the way that they think because you know we all think differently so we're all going to write differently. Um, so yeah sharing my experiences was, was really really important. What do you find some of the most common challenges for ACE students are who are transitioning to university writing? Um, well ACE students are pretty much all freshmen, and so they're really, really fresh off the block, <laughs> literally. Um, they, they don't have experiences, for the most part, with writing long essays that they have, you know, a month to do six to ten pages. Um, a lot of them have taken AP classes, which taught them how to write a really good essay in 40 minutes, but an essay that's written in 40 minutes is a lot different than an essay that, you know, you have a lot of time to, to kind of get through it. So. Um, a big part, a big kind of problem I see is just kind of people not really knowing how to use that time um, to really get to a level, like a depth into their thinking and kind of a depth to their argument. You know, when you're doing APs, it's first thing out of your head, you just kind of go with it and hope it works out. But um, with this kind of writing, where you have a lot more time, it's, it's basically a problem that people have to kind of get to that level of depth because they're so not used to really doing that. They're not practiced doing that. And, um, and a lot of them, too, just feel like they're just bad at writing and they don't really understand why. And they feel intimidated by university-level writing because they know that it's harder, they know it's different, but they don't really know how exactly. Mm -hmm. So that can be really scary and that can kind of create a block that people have a really hard time getting through. So what do you do when students are feeling blocked? That's my first question. And then secondly, how do you help students get a little deeper in their thinking? Um, well, dealing with a block, a lot of the time the block is because they don't feel confident and comfortable with their writing, and so I like to ask a lot of questions. That's what I spend most of the sessions doing, and when it's a block, I kind of ask people, like, well, do you have a specific time where you get stuck? 
you know, is there a specific point where you just feel like, I don't know what to do now? And then also, what do you do to get through that block? Because a lot of people just, you know, they just try to plow through it and it doesn't usually work. Um, uh, I give a lot of people like suggestions of different things they can think about, different questions they can ask themselves about the prompt, you know, like why would my professor assign me this um, can be a really good one. It can kind of get them thinking about what the professor might really want to see them doing. Um, and then also really highlighting the importance of, you know, taking breaks, making sure you're well fed and you're not leaving everything the last minute because the more stressed out your brain is, the harder it's going to be to, to conjure up an argument <laughs> on the page. Um, and uh, what was the second question? <laughs> oh, and how do you encourage students to take their oh, yeah. thinking to the next level? Probably yeah. by asking a lot of questions. Yeah, exactly. It's asking lots of questions. You know, um, people might have a thesis where they just kind of say, like, this happens. And then you, in that case, you know, that's not usually a strong thesis because anybody can come up with that just by reading the book. Um, so a lot of the time I ask them, you know, like, okay, so this happens. So why is this important? Why does this matter at all? Or, you know, how did this happen? You know, like, what, what kind of themes are going on? Um, what kind of, you know, kind of plot twists are we dealing with? You know, depending on the focus of the class, uh, you can come up with a lot of different questions about how and why. How and why are the two big questions that I asked. How, why, and why does it matter, basically? Um, and those really get people thinking because they kind of realize, like, oh, I don't really know why this is important. I just kind of, you know, a lot of times if you just pick something that you're like, oh, this sounds good. <laughs> and that used to fly in high school, but in this kind of level of writing where you do need to get to the level, you really need to be answering those how and whys. And so that's how usually it gets the ball rolling, kind of shows them either, it either leads them to a deeper level of thinking or just at least shows them, oh, I didn't think about this enough. And so I need to, you know, go take some time and really think about what I'm saying. Can you tell us a little bit about the portfolio requirement in writing one and writing two and how seeing multiple drafts might influence what you focus on earlier in sessions versus yeah, later? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, the portfolio process, um, it's a really classic writing class tool, basically. Um, people can com like kind of show the steps that led up to the final product because in your classes you're not really emphasizing the final product but the process because that's what we're working on is making that process easier to get to a good final product. So. Um, so it's really, really nice to kind of, like it's nice that the professors sort of require that of the students because you, it gives you the opportunity to say, you know, like look at your outline, look how far you came. And you can even um, compare, you know, their first portfolio to their second. A lot of times they do two or three portfolios per quarter. Um, and so when you can show them, you know, what progress they've made, it can be really encouraging for them. Um, it really is kind of like a confidence boost, which is really important. Um, and it can also show them, you know, like a lot of the time, people will struggle with a paper and they'll say, I got stuck so many times. And then I'll ask them, well, what were your pre-writing steps? You know, what, what things, what materials are you going to be turning in in your portfolio? And a lot of times it's nothing. <laughs> or it's something that they kind of learn to do but don't really understand why they're doing it. You know, like outlining, they might have trouble with it just because they don't really, you know, get the importance of sort of figuring out what you're going to say before you say it and kind of working with it and throwing things away and all of those kinds of things. That process isn't, it, they don't really understand a lot of times the importance of that process and that you should be throwing things away and you should be writing crap that you revise later. And um, so the portfolio process can really highlight the strength that, um, that these pre-writing steps and these planning steps can really bring to an essay. Excellent. Um, earlier you mentioned the balance of working with students, some of whom might be a little resistant to tutoring or they're just not quite sure what they want to get out of the session early on, whereas other students might be so enthusiastic about the tutoring that they might develop a slight dependency. Can you talk a little bit about how to negotiate different kinds of students you might see and different relationship they might have to tutoring and how that might change throughout the quarter? Yeah, um, there are definitely you get a lot of the two types of extremes where the more common one, I would say, is people who feel like they don't need help with tutoring it, or with writing and they don't need to see a tutor. And so when they come in, they kind of don't really have that much to say. They don't even know what questions to ask. They just can't think of any because they think they're fine. And um, so in that kind of scenario where they're not really talking or anything, um, I go straight to asking questions, even if it's just, 
So what did you write about? You know, most of the time we're dealing with the same prompt over and over again, but people kind of approach those prompts differently. So, uh, so I'm like, okay, well, just tell me about your paper. You know, what's your thesis? Uh, what kind of points do you make? Can you show me where these things are? And by doing that, we might end up at the end, you know, at least we talked about the paper, and it turns out the paper's great. You really didn't need any help. This was great. Or more, more likely is that we'll find problems with it, and they'll realize, like, oh, I didn't even think you know, that this would be a problem, or I didn't even think to look for this kind of thing. And it, it uh, at the same time as addressing those problems with that particular paper, it also shows them what kind of issues that they need to be aware of with their writing. And it kind of shows them the benefits of, you know, even if you feel pretty confident about what you have, stepping back and t kind of taking a new look at it and really looking at it analytically and asking yourself, you know, is this really good enough or can I go farther with this, basically. And uh, the students, there are some students who get pretty dependent. Um, sometimes I have, it's not too common, but I usually have at least one student that comes in every week. Uh, last time, last quarter I tutored, I had um, a student that came in twice a week. And, um, you know, the for the writing classes, they'll, they'll have some little assignments, but for the most part, they're mainly working on a paper. At, you know, at any one time, they're just working on the same paper, and so, um, you know, got to the point where I was working with this girl on her paper and she was just kind of getting so, so deep into it that she was sort of losing perspective of what she was doing. And at some point she was like, it's just not even, I don't even know what to do anymore. I feel like it's not good enough, but I also feel like I don't really know where to go from here. And I just had to tell her, take 24 hours and don't look at or think about this paper at all. Don't even think about it. Just go hang out with your friends. Don't worry about it for once. And when she came back, she had a lot better perspective and she knew what she wanted to do with the paper. And so that's kind of the problem of dependency is that people kind of work themselves into this sort of, sort of frenzied <laughs> kind of stuck point. Um, and, um, and then also, you know, we want them to be able to, to develop their skills on their own once we're done because, you know, ACE doesn't go past writing too. And, uh, so what I do to kind of deal with that is, you know, I'll point out to them the problems that they're having. I like to use basically just logic and say, you know, you've been looking at this so much that you kind of lost perspective, or you've been seeing me so much that, you know, will you be able, you know, will you feel comfortable writing later if I'm not around, because I'm not going to be. And, um, and if I ask them those questions and they feel kind of uncomfortable with it, I'll tell them, you know, I feel you come in so much that you totally have you know, you've got all my advice, you've got all the tools, I've helped you as much as I can, now you should take some time to see what you can do on your own, um, because that's really putting those skills to the test. And I'll still be here, it's really good to kind of get this out mid-quarter, because then you can still be there as a kind of security blanket somewhat later on, if they feel like, okay, this is what I did, can you see, and I can still help them further. Um, but it really kind of shows them, you know, that you don't need the crutch. And, they really do have the skills that they, you know, I've given them tons of advice. They already knew a lot, and uh, and they can really kind of realize, wow, I can do it. <laughs> and it makes them feel a lot better and a lot more confident. Okay, we've talked a lot about working with students in the ACE program. Let's talk a little bit about that relationship with the professor. What advice do you have for new ACE tutors who are going to introduce themselves to the professor and meet for the first time? What would you recommend that the new tutor do in that scenario? Um, Are there well, questions to ask? Yeah, um, it's definitely um, with the first meeting, uh, it's nice to get an idea of, I mean the professor will usually offer up like kind of what their end goal is for the class, usually for writing two and writing one, all the professors have pretty much the same goal, you know, they should be able to do this by the end of the class. Um, but you can also kind of ask them what kind of key uh, strategies they like to focus on. Um, and that's really important to know, not only so that you can emphasize those points if you need to, but also you can kind of avoid them if you feel like they're getting enough of that in class and you want to give them something extra because, you know, you're a tutor, you're different. Um, so that can be uh, really important to know, um, just basically, you know, what page the professor is on and what they see as, as, as important. Um, and it can also be really important to ask them kind of, you know, what kind of relationship they want to have throughout the quarter. How often do you want to meet? Do you want to just, like, some professors are fine with just keeping in touch with little emails here and there. Other ones, you know, will want at least one other long meeting halfway through the quarter to see how things are going. Um, what I like to do is 
to get to this class for signups. I like to get there a little early so I can have a little bit of dialogue with the professor and that way I can kind of talk to them, see where we are, and that can sort of help show me both you and the professor if you need to have a longer meeting and to talk more in depth or if you guys are on the same page and you're totally cool and it's fine. Um, so, uh, so yeah, those are kind of the big sort of things I like to get out of the, um, the first meeting is, you know, how often do you want to meet and also, you know, what kind of page are we on here. And plus it's just nice to get to know them a little bit and see where they're coming from. And the more you understand, you know, what the professor wants, the better you can help your students achieve it. Absolutely. And we'll talk more about that relationship with the professor. But first, I also wanted to ask, do you have tips for the first time an ACE tutor goes to class and introduces herself to students? Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to do at all my first time. I was like, oh, what do I do? Do I tell them about myself or something? Um, I think it is nice to tell them about yourself. Like, I like to throw in like that I have dogs because lots of people like that and they want to ask you about your dogs. and just kind of a little icebreaker for things. Um, but mostly I don't really focus on myself because they're probably like, don't care who I am right now <laughs> because they're just meeting me. Um, but I do really emphasize uh, the type of relationship we should have, which is not, you know, I'm not the TA. Um, I'm not ever gonna be able to answer questions about how they're gonna be graded. I'm not ever gonna be answer, you know, able to answer, you know, will it be double spaced or <laughs> or when exactly is it due? Like I'm not gonna have those answers and that's really important for them to know that right off the bat, because at some point they're gonna forget. <laughs> and um, so that's a really important thing. Mo one of the most important things that I kind of tell them at the beginning. Um, and I also like to tell them to come to see me early, because what I've had happen several times, it happened two quarters in a row before I started bringing it up uh, right off the bat, um, but uh, what happens is that people will come, you know, people don't think they need help, they don't feel like they need help, so they'll come in like week seven for the first time, and then it would be so helpful that they'll come in weeks eight, nine, and 10, and they'll want even more appointments than that because they're trying to squeeze in a quarter's worth of help into like two, three weeks. And uh, the end of the quarter is really busy, and I like literally can't do it. And um, so early on in you know that first meeting, I like to tell them you know come in early. You know you could come in this week, and we don't even have to talk about papers. We can just talk about you know we can just get to know each other a little bit. We can talk about what you're if you have any general writing concerns that I can be aware of, so that I can better know how to help you later. All of these kinds of things. But I always say come in early. That way, at least you can decide if it's helpful or not. And if it's helpful, great. Now you can come in you know, as much as you want for the rest of the quarter. You know how helpful it is. If not, if it's not that helpful, then at least you know. And you know, you can just come in for your minimum required amount of times and that'll be it and we'll be good. But at least you'll know that you didn't miss out on something really helpful, especially because ACE is a very unique opportunity uh, to meet with someone over and over again for free. <laughs> It's a, it's a pretty cool opportunity that's usually pretty expensive. <laughs> so I really like to point that out, you know, that you might as well use me if I'm here. And some people will listen and some won't, but at least get it out there. And how much do you report back to the professor about students' progress? How do you keep an open communication with the professor while also maintaining the student's confidentiality and trust? Is that ever tricky? Yeah, that's a good question. Balance. It's a little bit tricky. Um, sometimes professors ask about particular students, and I, if I don't feel comfortable answering, if I feel like that student wouldn't want to share that information with the professor, or if I feel like sharing that information with the professor won't really benefit that student, then I just, you know, I'll kind of answer really vaguely and kind of keep that confidentiality. Um, because that's really, I feel, what's most important is that the student is, is that the student feels comfortable with me, and that you know they feel comfortable enough to kind of voice their concerns and talk to me. Because if they don't feel comfortable, then they might you know stay silent about something that I could totally help them with, um, and or I could even point them to another campus resource if needed. Um, so it's really important to me that the students don't feel like I'm ratting them out. So. What I'll do is, if a, if a professor asks about a specific student, I don't feel comfortable answering, I'll answer pretty vaguely. Um, normally what I do is I'll talk to the professor in terms of trends that I see within the class because the, the chances are the professor's already noticed that any, anyway, and so I can kind of you know reinforce that yes, this is a problem, they've had a hard time kind of really nailing down what a thesis needs to be, and so I think they might need a little bit more work in general. Um, and uh, keeping it vague like that really helps kind of maintain that confidentiality. 
um, while at the same time it does raise awareness about specific concerns. Um, I always let students know also that if they want, if they're not comfortable asking a question with the professor, because professors can become intimidating, um, so if they're not comfortable asking a question with the professor, they can always ask me and I'll ask her or him anonymously. And um, I think that sometimes they use it, sometimes they don't. Um, a lot of times I'll just say, you know, you should just raise your hand because I've heard a lot of people asking this, but I'll also let her know, you know, just in case. Most professors I work with are women, so <laughs> um, I'll also, you know, let the professor know that, you know, a few people are concerned about this certain issue, or some people aren't really getting this, and and it needs to be addressed in class. Excellent, thank you. Um, and do professors ever want you to do something outside your role as an ACE tutor? I know you've mentioned you're not a TA. Does that right. role ever get a little slippery, or is there an do you have any examples that come to mind? Um, yeah. <laughs> and if so, what, do you, what would you tell a new ACE tutor to do in this scenario? Yeah, well definitely one thing I've learned is that if I was ever not sure about whether or not I should be doing something, I just ask Amy or Jeff, and they always know. <laughs> they know what we're supposed to do and what we're not. And um, that's the easiest way to kind of know what you should or shouldn't be doing. Um, in terms of dealing with it, um, well, I've had, I've had some professors give me the readers for their classes, and um, you know they said, like, you can read these or not if you want to. I've never had a professor really try to force you know, extra work on me, but they have kind of suggested things to me, and I kind of just take it like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll check it out, and then I don't, because it really doesn't help the student for me to know what their material's about. It's a lot better if they explain it to me, because uh, you know that way I can really see like oh they really understand it they can see it too you know or you know if they don't know how to answer my questions about the article then maybe they didn't understand it and they go back and check it out um, but um, but yeah I kind of I've never had it too forcefully pushed upon me um, but if I did have a professor that was really kind of pushing for me to do work outside of what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. If I didn't feel comfortable confronting them about it, which I usually try to kind of get enough of a relationship that I do feel comfortable objecting, you know, I try to talk to the professor enough that I feel more comfortable with that kind of dialogue, but um, if I don't feel comfortable, then um, I've asked Jeff what to do mm -hmm. in that kind of scenario, and he's always been, he's always known, like, exactly what to do, um, and, uh, or, you know, I'll just kind of let the professor know in my own way that, you know, I can't really do this kind of thing. Um, I'm just not really comfortable with doing this. I've been asked specifically not to do it by the <laughs> union a lot of the time. And uh, so, or I can even just say like it's CLS, CLS policy not to, which is kind of like pushes the blame away from me so that I don't feel like I'm gonna be targeted um, as kind of, you know, bad feelings. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you, is there anything in particular that you wish you'd known about the program before you started as an ACE tutor, anything? at um, the end of our session here that you'd like to impart to the new ACE tutor? Really good question. Um, well, I didn't really realize, I mean, I guess I kind of thought about it, but I didn't really realize how often I would be saying the same things over and over again. And it kind of, after a while of saying the same things over and over again, it's sort of harder to stay engaged and so your advice, you know, the, the more engaged you are, the more your advice will be really be received and kind of processed, but if you're getting kind of bored <laughs> saying the same things, um, it can be a lot harder to kind of connect with the student and the connection is so important. Um, and so I always just really try to maintain um, perspective of where the student's coming from, the fact that, you know, they are just out of high school and they've never written like this before. I mean, before I got to the UCSB, I'd written one six-page paper my entire life, and that was it. And so I was really uncomfortable, and it's really uncomfortable, too, to have people, you know, criticize your work that's kind of half-baked and you're not really feeling that great about it. And uh, so I really try to maintain that perspective. And that's what's, I think, the most important thing that I've learned and that I, I kind of wish I knew from the beginning is to kind of always think about where the student is coming from because it'll make you a better tutor and it'll make it more fun for you because you'll be kind of more interested and more engaged in who that person is as an individual. And so even if you end up telling them the same thing that you told the last person, it might be, you know, it's considering a lot of different options so it's, it doesn't feel so, um, so monotonous, I guess. Um, it doesn't really feel like you're a broken record as much when you're really actively kind of gauging, you know, what are the individual needs of this particular student. 
Um, I think we all have our little phrases we repeat. I'm constantly like, write that down, write that down. <laughs> totally. I have like so many. Um, yeah, I have a lot of things I tell people over and over again about conclusions, especially in comma slices and everything. But, um, and it, it could get really, you know, tedious kind of repeating. And I sometimes I forget too. It's a good thing to kind of try to keep track of what you tell each person. It, eventually it gets too hard and you just, I just tell students like, stop me if I've already said this because I lose track. But it, um, it can be, a little repetition can be helpful. Like in a paper, you want yeah. the transition. It's better to overemphasize than to definitely. not emphasize your yeah. main point. That's definitely. Well, as, a, really as a writer or a, or a tutor. Yeah, it's definitely kind of an interesting balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, how has your experience as an ACE tutor influenced your interest, future career plans? Oh, oh my god, it had such a huge effect. Um, because of the like connection that I got with the students, um, you know, being able to see them over and over again, it really made me um, realize that I really want to help people. And, um, you know, I really care about getting people their, you know, to their academic goals or their career goals even. Um, but it just, it really makes me feel like really alive to kind of connect with people on that level and, and you know, kind of guide them in such a way. But it's, it's not really like I'm just like a teacher kind of sitting there telling them what to do. It's more like they tell me what they're going through and I can really empathize. And then I feel so great that I can really, you know, kind of share ways that I dealt with it. And, uh, and sometimes I'll, I'll say something to people and it doesn't really click. They don't really get what I'm talking about. So I have to come up with a new way to say it. It's always so exciting when that one, you can kind of see it like, oh, mm. yes. <laughs> so um, it really, really influenced me a lot because it, it showed me, you know, what a joy it is to, to help people and to work with people like that, um, just off of that kind of intimate sort of one-on-one -on -one level. Um, and then also just in terms of communication skills, I mean, communication skills are like essential to most jobs, I would say. And, uh, and if you can explain a concept to a student and they can understand it, then you're in good shape. So uh, that always looks really good <laughs> on a resume too. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank so. you so much for coming back and offering guidance to our new group of tutors coming in. We really appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Emma. Mm -hmm.